Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well. It's first thing in the morning and I am excited, I hope you are too. I can't wait for tonight, but I am absolutely bricking it now. Like, I <laughs> I don't know, is my heart going to be able to take tonight? I'm not so sure. We will see though. You will be getting the review once it's all said and done, no matter what, win or lose. There is no draw because it has to end tonight. And we saw an example of that yesterday where France got knocked out cold. <laughs> knocked out cold by Lamine Yamal and the rest of Spain and ugh, fair play Spain. Going 1-0 behind and then getting that job done in that manner. Beautiful. Lamina Mal, by the way. You see, now that, that is a wonder kid. That is someone that you look and go, yeah, he's going to the top. Like, there's, there's no discussion. There's no discussion. Beautiful goal at the highest stage of them all, basically. Beautiful. So, if, respect to Spain. Congratulations in the final. France, they're out. They haven't looked good this tournament, if I'm being completely honest. They didn't have a good tournament. They got to the semi final, but they've not been good. No one has, except Spain, if I'm being completely honest, and that's including England. But with England, it's a bit different, because with England, look, France have had their time in the sun, you know what I mean? They've had their, their moments, they, they've, they've, been, they've been winners. It's only, you know, the natural cycle of life where you have to come down a bit in order to get back up. With England, we've not hit the top. We're that team that should be there, but we just don't get there. And there's clear reasoning as to why that is the case, and... For time and time again, we have seen that Gareth Southgate and his decisions have just held us, held us, held us back. And yet we're in the semi-final again. And he still somehow manages to pull this off. But are we going to go all the way? Many people looked at Spain yesterday and went, nah, even if England make the final, pff, no chance. <sighs> I want Southgate to prove me wrong just once. Just once, and then you can ride off into the sunset, mate. Honestly. Um, now, what we've heard going into this game and what we should be doing going into this game are two different things once again, of course. England have that team, and look, we all can see on paper, at least on paper, and even when England under a high-press situation where they have to go all guns blazing, you then see what England are actually capable of. It's absolutely crazy that the talent and what the names are on this on, on paper for this England squad compared to the way that we actually play is just it's criminal. And some of the decisions, especially in terms of team selection that we see from Gareth Southgate, just boggles our minds. And you know what it does? It adds more pressure to us, right? As a fan, I go in feeling more nervous because of the decisions that Gareth Southgate makes. If he were to make the decisions that all of us can see needs to be done, we would be a little bit more at ease. But I'm going into tonight, for example, bricking it because I just know he's going to do something crazy, right? He's going to do something that's just, it's going to make all of us go what what are you doing what are you doing and then we'll go through the motions and then chances are we'll probably end up in the final <laughs> and then we'll be like oh my god here we go again it's an emotional roller coaster and let's see an example as to why right now what i am would do and my start in 11 we'll get to in a sec but I have to address one thing before we actually go into what it seems like Gareth Southgate is going to do. Why is it that one day, two days, sometimes even three days before a game, it's already been leaked as to what the team's going to be? Who is the mole here? Who's letting this info out? I don't want to know. When it comes to club football, that's one thing, right? Because club football... Club football is deemed more, you know, as vocational. It's it's a it's a profession. It's it's a club, right? It's an institution. It's an organisation. With with national team football, this is your country, mate. Like this is the nation. It's a different ball game. You don't let out anything unless you want to give another country a chance. What are you doing? What are we doing here? You know. 
every time with this England team, the team comes out at least a day before, sometimes more. I don't understand why. How is this info getting out? Southgate himself had to address it in terms of information getting out. Where is it coming from? Southgate, listen, you might just not need to tell anybody, right? And tell only a few of the players privately without mentioning anything to any other staff. Or, and, and then you'll know if it's coming from the players. And then you can address it as to which, who's the mole here, who's letting it out. But anyway, we're coming to the end of the tournament anyway. We're still somehow in it and, and, and this is still the case. So let me show you what it seems like. I mean, what, the, the, the news is out. I'm not going to try and stop it now because everyone knows what's happening. But here's what apparently the team will be. England expected 11 to face the Netherlands, right? This came out um, in the middle of last night, right? Early hours. Pickford, Mark Gurhey, Stones, Walker. Saka, Trippier, Kobe Mainu, Rice, Bellingham, Foden and Kane. Now, now you understand. Why, me personally, I'll go into this game now just beyond nervous. <laughs> beyond nervous. I have to say this, yeah. There are names there that are absolutely justified, but... How is Cole Palmer not starting? I don't, look, five games. Five games. And he still can't start. Why? Why, Gareth, why? Why, why? What are you watching? I, I don't know. Unless, you know what it is? What, I'm sure it's this, yeah. Gareth Southgate in his head's going, oh, you know, every time I, uh, I, I bring Cole Palmer off the bench, um, it works. <laughs> That's it. So I'm not going to start him because I'm going to keep doing this because it works i bet that's the logic i bet that's the logic all these substitutions i'm making are making differences and we're winning games like I, I guarantee instead of thinking now you know what i found out what's better than what i've been doing so let's go with that now nah, forget that we're gonna go with what we have kept doing and and living on the brink right living on the knife edge and and just being certain that it's going to work in our favour because sometimes being on a knife edge, yeah, it doesn't go in your favour, does it? It's just incredible. That defence and the formation, I've not got a problem with. Saka as wing-back, even Trippier as wing-back, to be honest, I wouldn't do. That's problem number one for me. The midfield, yeah, it's fine, but... I would compensate that midfield not being there in order to facilitate Cole Palmer coming into the fold alongside Foden and then Bellingham can tuck in a little deeper. Um, I'll get to my starting 11 in a little sec as I got the notion that I was about to sneeze. And am I going to sneeze? No. <laughs> I'm good. Um, so that's that. But I also have to address Harry Kane. Starting. I get why Southgate would want to go, you know what, let's start Harry Kane. I wouldn't start Harry Kane, I'm sorry. We have seen now, in that last game against Switzerland, was enough to tell us that even when England are moving forward, I remember saying in, in previews that as long as England can, can push forward and get everything into the final phase, and Harry Kane will then be involved. Well, Harry Kane was involved and he fluffed everything. Um, physically, wasn't quick enough, um, wasn't urgent enough, lost every ball, lost most of his passes, lost all the duels. We can't. So, I wouldn't start Harry Kane. I think we're better off starting off one of the other strikers. Some people have a problem with Foden. I don't have a problem with Foden if we're playing in a back three and he's playing a little bit more central. That's fine. If he's playing on to, you know, onto the flank and he's stuck there by the touchline, then yeah, I've got a problem because that's just not where he's best suited. But this formation and the way that it's set up with the two in behind the striker and those wing backs that are going to be overlapping allows those two players, which again, I would put Foden and Palmer, um, in order to operate a little bit more central and that would be fine. But 
Those are the issues that I see in the Singlin team. So what would I do? Let's get into it. Let's get into what I would do. Here is my starting 11. Right. On screen for you guys, off the bat, Pickford has been brilliant this tournament, right? Uh, and even the penalty shootout against Switzerland, fantastic. So Jordan Pickford, respect. The back line, um, I would keep the same. I didn't have a problem with um, the back line against Switzerland, Konza included. I wouldn't be against Gerhi coming back in if he does come in, but I think Konza has been good. So I've not got a problem either way. Walker, Stones, Gerhi slash Konza, cool. I would play Trent at right wing back, right? Um, and Saka at left wing back. Now, Trent at right wing back, um, I think allows is it this is just us thinking what should be done southgate's not going to do this but if trent was at right wing back he can actually tuck into midfield that is where you utilize trent with his liverpool role where he does become an additional midfielder he inverts and he adds himself as an option next to declan rice that gives freedom for bellingham to move forward and boom you've now got a very attacking lineup so trent in that role i'm not against and i think that suits him best if you're going to play trent you play him in that role saka at left wing back look i have to say saka saka man of the match at the last game right easily penalties fantastic he's clearly gotten over the last time that he flopped it <laughs> so respect to, 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 to saka and even in this role, he has to play. I wouldn't mind him playing a little bit more forward as an in-and-out winger, but I would just have to play Cole Palmer then. You can't play both of them at the same time in the same role. So Saka on, at, in that wing-back role, done very, very well against Switzerland. For me, the brightest England player on the pitch. So, for, so I would stick him in that role and keep him there. Keep him there. Now, chances are we're going to have Saka on the right and Trippier on the left i'm guessing that's how it's going to be done um it can also be done the other way around if i'm being if i'm trying to think logically here but whatever way saka though i would play left wing back um and i'll be very happy if, he, if if that were to be the case declan rice in deep deep midfield bellingham just ahead of him again if trent was there he can tuck in and bellingham moves forward when we're defending trent moves out bellingham tucks in and you get the gist um, and it allows Bellingham to play that box-to-box -box role. And then Palmer, Foden, in that inside-forward sort of role. And up top, Ivan Tony. Not Harry Kane. Harry Kane is someone that you bring on later, right? If you're trying to shut down a game, some experience that you can rely on, a bit of energy at the end of the game, cool, bring on Harry Kane, 20 minutes, you're good to go. But Ivan Tony, I think, needs to be the one to, to, to start. I wouldn't be against Ollie Watkins either. But Ivan Tony, every time he's come on, the last two games, he's come on, he's made a big difference. Huge. So I would start him. He's got the energy. He's got the technique. Um, he's good on the ball. He's physically really good as well. He commands his area. He links up well. Um, we've seen in training some of the shots that he's been taking. And I, I, don't take, I don't read too much into training. But there was one volley in particular. And I'm like, yo, Ivan Tony, if you do that, against um the netherlands <laughs> we are in for a treat um so i hope that makes sense let me know in the comments what would you do but that ladies and gentlemen is my starting 11. now as i tell you guys to subscribe hit the notification bell there will be the match review after it's all said and done i am going away to um to watch it again so i might come onto the review with no voice again um the vocal cords are going to get strained it's as simple as that <laughs> um the netherlands are a decent side but they've not been playing well right similar to us very a very premier league orientated side too We've seen Gakpo. Obviously, they got Van Dijk. Gakpo's been playing really, really well. Um, Veghorst, obviously, they've got up top. They've got Premier League ballers in that team that are going to match the same energy as our lot because they play Premier League football. And if you're playing um, at the highest level physically, then you're going to have the same advantage. So it's going to be down to system, to composure, to who wants it more. Simple as that. And um, I don't think Netherlands have been brilliant this tournament, even tactically. So this, this is why I look at this and I go, nah, England have got a good chance here. I'm more concerned of the final against Spain, if anything, right? If that were to happen. 
But I just pray, no matter how it gets done, please, England, get to the final again. And let's do it on Sunday. But I hope we get it done. If I'm going to give you a prediction... I said 2-1 in my last prediction and it ended up being 1-1 and then we won on penalties. So, close enough. Tonight... Man. I expect a very conservative game. A game of nerves. A game of two cautious teams. I don't think we're going to see great end-to-end -end football. I don't think we're going to... It's not going to be pretty. If you're neutral, good luck. Be careful because you're not going to enjoy it. I'm just going to say that now. You're not going to enjoy it. Um, I am going to say... Man, this is too tough. England won, Netherlands nil. Yeah, one of those ones. But I don't care. I just need England in the final, please. We just need them in the final. Good luck. Come on, the boys. Let's do it. I am bricking it. And I will see all of you tonight. Once it's all said and done. And you'll either see me jumping up and down like a flipping yo-yo. Or you'll see me in tears. One of them. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Thank you so much. Be here tonight for the review. And I'll catch you lot then. Have a good one, people. In a bit. Take care.